The views and opinions expressed by the guests, callers, and hosts on this and all Rents Radio Network programs do not necessarily reflect or agree with those of the network, its commercial sponsors, its radio station affiliates, or Internet broadcast platforms. In these controversial times, we believe the First Amendment and freedom of the press are absolutely essential to the survival of our nation. Thank you. And now, enjoy the program. sofa, whatever, open your ears, open your mind, and we hope to bring you some information that is new and provocative and will help you think more clearly about the madness that is surrounding most of us on this planet. There are some who have gone into a Zen state and just don't care, and maybe they're the lucky ones, I don't know. Here's a, a story that you got just got to laugh at this stuff, I, I guess, I or cry. Yahoo News is reporting it, and it. Uh, I think I ran it yesterday. President, I hate to say president, the alleged president, Barack Obama, promised in an interview broadcast late Monday that his decision, his decision, to arm Syrian rebels, rebels, does not mean the United States is taking sides. Now, this is a quote. Does not mean the United States is taking sides in a religious war, end quote. That's what this creep is calling the Zionist mercenary slaughter of over 100,000 Syrians in that country, clearly a takeover attempt by the international Zionist bankster cartel headquartered in the city of London. That's where it all traces back. It's all about money and control and greater Israel. Obama went on to say to PBS's Charlie Rose that the NSA revelations by Ed Snowden were just a ruckus. Just a ruckus. No big deal. He said, if you're a U.S. person, it's an odd construct, isn't it? If you're a U.S. person, then NSA is not listening to your phone calls and it's not targeting your emails unless it's getting an individualized court order, end quote. Right. The lies just keep pouring out. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. He went on to say there are two programs that were revealed by Mr. Snowden, allegedly revealed by him since there's a criminal investigation taking place, and they caused all the ruckus, he said to Rose. Just a ruckus. No big deal, folks. No big deal at all. Gerald Salenti is with us once a month in his busy schedule. We always welcome this time greatly and uh, have wonderful conversations. All right, my friend, welcome back. And, uh, I mean, it's it's despicable and getting worse. Well, you're right. It's despicable and getting worse because you also left out the wonderful new Supreme Court ruling. Oh, I was getting there, but go ahead. Yeah. Tell it. Lay it I, on us. It's important. Well, you don't have Fifth Amendment rights anymore. The right to remain silent. Now the re- right, right to remain silent can mean that you're guilty. Yeah, before, yeah Absolutely. Fifth yeah, Amendment because, is now equated with essential guilt, folks. That's so. right. Yeah. So, you know, this, um, you get the Trends Journal. Uh, back thank a you. year ago. Wonderful. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, spring issue, 
2012. And the, the, we had a uh, the the cover art. It was very people got very upset about it. It was next train to Auschwitz. All aboard, kiss those calories goodbye. Fabulous cover. Remember that one with all of the stock car, the, the, the cars, cattle the US, cars, made right. in USA, the cattle cars. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. And people with I love Bieber, World Wrestling Federation T-shirts, pants hanging down, getting on board. Well, in that you know, on in that issue, we did a story on page twenty six called Big Bro. Without the public really noticing or caring enough to notice, Obama's 2012 had become Orwell's 1984. Big Brother had arrogated to himself full power to do as he pleased. So what? What was the big deal? Does anyone really care? Why should anybody have to know about the NDAA and the NDRP executive order? We go on to pay. Washington was everywhere and affected everything. And we outline in chapter and verse, actually, Mm -hmm. about uh, what this fellow Snowden has just talked about over a year later. Yeah, exactly. Well, that's what the trends journal is famous for. You're right on it. You've been doing this for two decades now. And, um, you know, it's right there. I mean, here's here's a story from... um, U.S. eases rule on use of data on Americans. Mm -hmm. The Obama administration has moved to relax restrictions on how counterterrorism analysts may retrieve, store, and search information about Americans gathered by government agencies for purposes other than national security threats. The guidelines will lengthen to five years from 180 days, the amount of time the center can retain private information about Americans when there is no suspicion that they are tied to terrorism. Intelligence officials said intelligence officials, right? I love that line. The guidelines are also expected to result in the center making more copies of entire databases mm-hmm. and, quote, data mining them mm-hmm. using complex algorithms to search the patterns that could indicate a threat. Again, remember, this is um, you know, over a year ago. Yeah. These aren't just so, keyword searches, folks. It's way beyond that. Anyway. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, you know, we, we go on to write, and out Orwellian Orwell, whose fictional big brother convinced the populace he had to watch them in order to protect the national security, mm-hmm. the real life Holder Obama guidelines for the National Counterterrorism Center permitted the government to, quote, Retrieve, store, and search information about Americans for purposes other than national security threats. It's wow. right there. You had it you all. Know, we, we wrote about this stuff. Yeah. And you know what I've come to the conclusion? Two of them. The first one is that this is perfectly logical in a fascist state. And fascism, of course, is, the, and I know people are going to send me emails and saying, no, this isn't what Mussolini said. They're wrong. Mussolini said the merger of state and corporate powers is fascism. And too big to fail is the beginning of the indoctrinated fascist state. Oh, absolutely. In the United States. You're bailing out businesses. And again, once again, Eric Calder, our attorney general, he said that the reason he didn't prosecute the too big to jails in the financial sector was a fear that it might cause to destabilize the economies, or words to that effect. Mm -hmm. So now what we have, Jeff, is the pure understanding here that this isn't really about counterterrorism or intelligence or even watching us. That's only part of it. The other part of it is who is Big Brother? And according to everything that I've read, Big Brother are the military contractors the ones that are hired to do these jobs. And according to a story in the Financial Times, we're spending $80 billion. Hey, folks out there in Detroit where it's rotting away, East St. Louis, Camden, Trenton, and and a city near you, Mm -hmm. $80 billion on so-called counterterrorism. And there are, check the number, 150,000, 150,000 private contractors doing the work. 
So all this really is... 150,000 in this country. Yes. Wow. According to the Financial Times article. Mm -hmm. Let's not and, leave out, let's not leave out, Gerald, excuse me, this is important, let's not leave out universities on grants from many of these military industrial complexes to do the real dirty work. Oh, They're involved uh, too. Uh, of course. And the the other aspect of this is, for example, when you just look at the, the one of the companies, uh, uh, I love the name, Booze. <laughs> oh, Booze Allen. Booze Allen <laughs> Hamilton, right? Yeah, right. Booze Allen. The guy, Mitch McConnell, who's the head of it, the CEO, mm -hmm. son of a gun. He was also the National Security Agency head under Bill Slick Willie Clinton from yep. 1992 to 1996. Round and around they go. Exactly, the revolving door. The other guy, Clapper. I love his name, man. But he, he and he and a picture of him and and Dick Cheney is enough for for a uh, for a Marvel comic book special anytime, you know. Or a series. Yeah. yeah. We're, we're yeah. going to go through the break, Brett. Uh, keep going, Joe. This is. But uh, anyway, so when you're looking at this, this is more of a money making scheme than anything else. Just as the military industrial complex is. It's another scheme for people to get rich off the government. Yeah. So when you look and you read about how they pushed for this whole national security agency and all this intelligence on and on and on, it's a money-making scheme. In the meantime, as in, in any good fascist state, they keep us in line. So that's what's really going on as I see it here. Sh shouldn't we say military-industrial congressional complex now? Well, you see, you know, in the last Trends Journal, I wrote about it, that, that it's really, it's two groups. It, 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 there are two mafias. You know, there, there are the, the mafia families. One is the military-industrial complex, and the other are the money junkies. And all the, all the politicians are, are the wise guys. That's all. They're the there wise guys for the mafia. There you go. Perfect place to hang them out. I like that. Yeah. So they, they're not, you know, they're not a mafia on their own. They're just the low lowlifes, you know. They'll, they'll, just, they'll just do what they're told. So what we're looking at now, of course, we're talking about Syria. You were talking about I'd like to read you a quote. Former French Foreign Minister Roland Dumas, during an interview with the French parliamentary TV network, LCB, recounted that he was in Britain on, a matters, on matters before the outbreak of violence in Syria. Quote, mm -hmm. I met with top British officials who confessed to me that they were preparing something big in Syria, he said. He continued, this was in Britain, not in America. Britain mm -hmm. was organizing an invasion of rebels into Syria. Now, think about this. You know, I was thinking this morning, as I was getting ready, preparing the day, you know, they're going to school, like high school and college, and how they used to trumpet up, how the uh, sun never set on the British Empire, as oh, though yeah. it was a good, right? As though it was a nice thing, you know. Of course, Rural rather Britannia. than looking at these brutal, yeah. these brutal imperialists. I mean, the British are among the most violent, brutal sect that ever swept across the yeah. continents. The slaughters, murderous, and murderous, horrible, murderous bastards. Look at the study of the South African Boer War just for ten minutes, and you get the picture. Yes, I mean that's where concentration camps were born. That's right. In the Boer Wars, and 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 I love it, but they they always speak so proper, and they they always have you know their pinky in their air as they're <laughs> sipping cups of tea as they're quit committing mass murder. And when you watch this little chicken or Cameron shooting off his mouth at the G8 meeting, mm -hmm. you can see where this is all going. They can't get over that colonial trip, neither can the English. And now, of course, the Americans are just their cousins. And I've also come up with a new slogan. Remember that old slogan by Calvin Coolidge, the business of America mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. is business. Mm -hmm. The business Silent. of America is now war. Silent the business of China is business. So while America wages war, China is waging business. China has well over $5 trillion in foreign assets. 
and reserve currencies, that they are buying up the planet from the Bordeaux region in France to talking about building a new Panama Canal style uh, waterway through Nicaragua to building dams and infrastructure repair in Costa Rica, Trinidad, Tobago, and again, throughout oh, Africa. All over Africa. Yep. And don't forget at home, they're building their own infrastructure too. Oh. And we're waging war. And frittering, other... our, frittering away our money, our, our nation's life's blood, our young people, our infrastructure is shot. Uh, it's the antithesis of what you just outlined. And then I'm thinking about, as you were talking about Obama, and talking about, <laughs> I like what we have to do in what we have to do in Syria, and uh, how the Syrians, of course, use these deadly, ghastly weapons to. And they, they're they're claiming they use sarin gas, of course, with about with less information and less uh, uh, facts than uh, they had that Saddam Hussein had weapons of mass destruction Correct. and Taj al-Qaeda, right? Yep. yep. There's no proof at all. So then I started thinking, you know, they're, they're screaming and yelling about uh, the United States, uh, I mean, about, about Syria using uh, uh, sarin gas, and, and you hear Cameron, uh, how despicable this is. And I started thinking about, yeah, sarin gas, man. Now, let me get this straight. What did the United States use? Okay, they dropped a couple of atom bombs, napalm, uh, Agent Orange, Vietnam, cluster mm -hmm. bombs. Mm -hmm. You know, what, what other kind of bombs? You know, the uh, carpet bombs. Uh, oh, how about white phosphorus? That's a little beauty, too, isn't it? Willie uh, Pete. Oh, depleted Pete uranium. I forgot about depleted uranium. How can I, forgot about, how can I forget about that one? The hypocrisy yeah. that's going on here is beyond anything I've ever can imagine, and it just never stops. Really important points, uh, every one of them. The DU especially, we have uh, covered Iraq in DU, uh, Libya, Afghanistan, and that stuff doesn't stay put, it moves, okay? And these are nuclear weapons, depleted uranium rounds, make no mistake about it. We are fighting with nuclear weapons in these countries. And it is beyond, it should be before the International Criminal Court, of course. Back home here, the only national security threats I see are Holder, Obama, uh, APAC, uh, the Congress, the Supreme Court. Uh, th those are national security threats. And the American public, you had a great line when you were quoting from the Trans Journal of, of last year about the Congress. The American public sent back to D.C. in the last election, 96% of the criminal scum that is still sitting there ensconced in their chairs. And another point about the Brits and their ruthless, malicious slaughtering of humanity, whether it be India, South Africa, or anywhere they've gone. Look what they did in China. Oh, yeah, the, I forgot about that one. The lovely opium war. How yeah. can I forget that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And don't yeah. forget that the Brits are sitting on all of this corruption, all this depravity, and it is all underpinned with a subculture of pedophilia of little boys and little girls. And don't you ever forget it. They are the yeah, most yeah, depraved I mean, you know, culture of all. I, you know, I, I am so disgusted. Oh, you remember when that guy uh, uh, cut up that soldier and he read why he yeah. did it? Yep. Oh, my God, a British soldier was killed. Now, how, how many thousands, how many tens of thousands British soldiers are occupying and killing in Afghanistan, right. in Iraq? Right. How many? Oh, oh no, they, we have the right to be there. Because don't you know who we are? Oh, we were there in the 19th century, and we're back in the 21st century. I mean, who the hell do these people think they are? And all these countries calling it terrorism. How about calling it getting even? And <laughs> you got that right. Uh, the score will never be settled. No. Uh, it'll never so be even. Th then the other one is, now we're hearing Obama, you know, now the United States. It's probably up to about 700 million to a billion now. 
mm-hmm. of of money that's gone to the so-called rebels mm-hmm. in Syria. You know, mm-hmm. Al Nusra, Al Qaeda. Yeah, Al Capone, you know, they're all the same, you know. Criminal killers from 29 yeah. different countries. Yeah, that's so. So anyway, now, now check it out, right? We're going back. Now, this is the same military-industrial complex and governmental sociopaths who brought us the Vietnam, Afghan, Iraq, and Libya war. And now they're at it again. And never mind that all of their, quote, foreign entanglements were monumental failures that oh, ended in abject failure yeah. and, and, and tragic results. Mm-hmm. Now they're at it again. I mean, they're 0 for 4. Now they're going to go 0 for 5. Well, they got the Iraqi oil. Uh, there's more oil in Iraq than any other Middle East country. So they got that. It's going. There's one pipeline that goes right directly to Israel. So. They're looting Iraq. That was that was. But I'm just saying, yeah. Well, I mean, look what's going on. Iraq is Iraq is destroyed. It's yeah, totally destroyed. And and now, so here's a trend forecast that you could take to the bank. If these madmen and mad women insist upon waging war against the Syrian government, Mm -hmm. we are saying it will mark the beginning of World War Three. And you don't have to be a trend forecaster or Einstein to predict how that one will eventually end. And you know that quote from Einstein. I do not know how the Third World War will be fought, but I can tell you what they will use in the fourth. Rocks. (laughs) That's a great quote. I hadn't heard that for a while. That's a great quote. And that... what is what people should understand. No more to war. Right. The losers are taking us to another losing battle, and this one we may all lose our lives. Just look at what's going on in the Middle East. Egypt is shot. It's gone. Iraq is a mess. Afghanistan is totally, totally totally destroyed and on the brink of another violent outbreak that's going to continue to spread. Pakistan, all of those drone killings, all of the support that the United States has put in there to destabilize the region is working perfectly. A new president was just elected and the violence is increasing at proportions not seen in recent years. Yeah. Yep, yep. All right, we got to pause here just for a minute. The issue about Syria that is even remotely hopeful is Russia and Putin. The lawmakers here, so like, how can we call these people lawmakers? The scum in Capitol Hill is pressing the uh, felon in the White House to implement a no-fly zone over Syria. Now, they're all being pushed to do this by their APAC masters. Don't don't make any mistake about that. Putin and Russia says it will not allow a Syria no-fly zone to be established. Now, I hope that Putin flies a squadron or two of MiG-29s tonight into Syria and says, Nyet, try it, and we'll shoot you down. I hope he begins to transport S-300s immediately to Syria and... Put them in there with Russian crews. This has got to stop. If the Russians turn tail and slink away, it's over. This is the, this is the big issue. This is the, it's a bigger issue than Syria. Whether or not Russia will stand up and fight this Western fascist Zionist juggernaut. And we will see soon enough. We'll be right back with Gerald Salente, Trends Research, in just a minute. What do your folks tell you about uh, Russia and its resolve? If they allow Syria to be balkanized by this uh, this outrage, 
they're really going to have little buffer. Iran will obviously be targeted next. We know the same old story. They've been planning to, to take Iran out for 15 years now, they being the, the greater Israel Zionist banksters in the area and in the uh, city of London, of course. That little area in London that nobody knows about, it's a two-square-mile sovereign nation in the middle of London, England, which does not answer to the laws of Great Britain. They're not applicable. It's kind of like Monaco uh, or Monaco, however you want to pronounce it. It's a strange situation that people just don't get. And from that little two-square-mile enclave, literally spins out tentacles that envelop the world and have inserted into every country the Rothschild central banking template. Okay? Every country has one except three. And those three, again, are Cuba, North Korea, and Iran. Now, Libya didn't have one. Iraq didn't have one, and look what happened to them. We have one over here. The Rothschild Central Reserve Banking Template is the Federal Reserve. The first announcement made by, and I've said this before, the so-called rebels, again imported mercenary killers, in Libya when they captured Benghazi, the first announcement they made was that the new Central Bank of Libya was open for business. All right, this is all about money and control. Forget politics. You all remember uh, Meyer Amschel Rothschild's famous quote about, I don't care who runs for office, just give me the right or the ability to control the money of a nation and elect whoever you want. And that tells you the story. I remember the last century, Bernard Baruch, one of the most wealthy uh, Jewish men of the century, owned Winston Churchill's drunken butt uh, two times, three times over. They were both on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange in 1929 when the crash occurred, engineered every step of the way. So th this is all about money, all right? Uh, Al and Tipper Gore, they, their daughter, uh, Jacob Schiff, one of the other most wealthy, powerful Jewish businessmen of the last century, his grandson married Al Gore's daughter. It's all in the family. This is all a true conspiracy. And so for anybody who carps about conspiracy theorists, no, we are conspiracy researchers because the world is run by conspiracy and always has been. Well, I don't, I, I don't think it's conspiracy. I think it's right out in the open. Well, it is a conspiracy in the <laughs> open. For, for yeah, sure. it's, it's, you know, it's a takeover. Yeah. You know, and it, you just have to look at every level of life. You know, I've come up with a new name for America. Slavelandia. Yeah, that That's works. all people are. I mean, what, you know, this is all graduation season. You know, just ended for colleges. Oh, yeah, great. Yeah. Now, what are they going to do? Okay, you're going to get a job at Walmart? <laughs> How about pay, Staples? To pay Maybe. off your $100,000 student loan. <laughs> oh, yeah, one of my favorite courses, by the way. I, I, I used to make fun of anthropology. And, and, yeah, I mean, these are wonderful things to have if you're very rich, come from a very rich family, have nothing else to do with your life because you're not going to get a job in this field and you just want to study it for the scholarly aspect of it, which is great if you could afford it, but it's not going to buy you a job. So they got all these worthless, I call them degrees in worthlessness. Uh, you know, uh, how about foreign relations or... or uh, Sociology. So, a psych major, how about that one? That art history. Uh. Yeah, art history. So now my new favorite, though, is women's studies. Oh, perfect. I, I, that, that's a great one. And, and so I think it's sexist to have women's studies. I want to see men's studies. No, How no. How come there are no men's studies? That's class? not PC. Sorry. No, no. Sorry. Look, if there's women's studies, there has to be men's studies. Well, they had black studies, but they didn't have white studies. No, no, no. And, and the other one that, you know, I always hear this, if only the women were in charge, you know, the, most, lest we forget Hitler -y and Margaret Thatcher and, you know, you go down and listen to Dear Gandhi and, and uh, you know, right. one after another, oh, Gallard over there in Australia. You know, I mean, wonderful, wonderful, I mean, real stand-up women, you know. And, and oh, and, and let's not forget uh, Susan Rice and, and Samantha Powers in the U.S. offices, you know, the now that our new, uh, what, what is she, NSA? Not NSA. Uh, what, what did they appoint her to? Yeah, I think it was 
Anyway, and, and she was before that. She was uh, Susan Rice was with the United Nations, our representative there, and Samantha Powers was something with the NSA. And and these are the women, along with um, Hillary Clinton, that pushed for the Iraq uh, for the Libyan war. Well, and you know, just, and, just for the record. Well, Condoleezza Rice. The, most of them are lesbians, of course. Well, what, but anyway, with, but Whatever. these I mean, if only the women were in charge line. So now my favorite one is. Now the women could serve as Navy SEALs and Rangers. So now they could become really, really violent, right? And they could go all out. So what happened to this thing about if only the women were in charge? You know, so now they got the positions also mm-hmm. of high killing power. But anyway, going back to Russia, what you were talking Su- about. Susan Rice, uh, National Security Advisor. Go ahead. Oh, that, that was it. Yeah, NSA, right. Uh, going back to what you were saying about Russia. Hey, you know, the, the difference is, and you pointed it out, Russia has nuclear weapons. I mean, thermonuclear weapons. And nobody's going to play, nobody's going to screw around with Russia. There's no, no, I mean, you go back in history, whether it was Napoleon, Hitler, or anybody, you don't, you're not going to take out Russia. People get it in their heads. These are the Russians. You know, they'll, how many did they lose in the, the you know, Battle of Leningrad, Stalingrad? Lots. What, what, about 40, 20, 30 million Russians died in World War II. Yeah, they just kept coming. Yep. They didn't stop. They're not going anywhere. They're not going. So nobody's going to intimidate Putin, particularly these little boys like Cameron and Hollande and and Obama. Uh, The little punks, little tweaks. Yeah, they're not going to, they're not, they're not intimidating Putin. So uh, this is why I'm saying that Syria could turn into World War Three. You bet. The battle lines are being drawn. And I mentioned the destabilization from Pakistan, Egypt, Tunisia, Yemen, Bahrain. Now it's moving into Lebanon. And then, of course, there's Israel. I saw a movie uh, you mentioned about the Boer War. Now we come go, back. We can. No, well, go ahead. Uh, right oh, through okay. it. Right. Uh, I, I I went to a, mo- uh, a a documentary. It was it was it was called something apartheid. And it, what happened was after the Boer War, I, you mentioned the brutality that the, uh, the against British, white Christian men, women, and children. Yeah. So that the the Boers went into South Africa after that, and they went there with a religious zeal that God had given them that area. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, we saw apartheid and all its ugliness. And the author of this film made the comparison between apartheid in South Africa and apartheid in Israel. And it was brilliantly done. Uh Just as the the Ashkenazi, the the European Jews, went into Israel uh-huh. As with the Zionists, as the, that as this was their land to save them from the slaughterers. The same thing with the Boers, and of course we know about the atrocities that were committed by the Boers against the South Africans. And again, making the parallel, showing how the, how South Africa was all cut up into the black areas, and just now as Israel is all cut up with all of these uh, Palestinian. On, you know, they're, they're all separated by, by these walls. Mm-hmm. So anyway, the And the nobody's premise, saying anything about it. No, no. <laughs> it's, it's like it's happening in Mars. It's not on this planet. The outcome of this movie was right at the very end, and, and this is, I totally agree with the concept. For not a two-nation, two-state solution, but a one-state solution, there should be no Gaza, no West Bank. There should nothing should be broken up. It should all be incorporated under one state. Sure, always should have been. So, I agree with that because if again, if Israel continues to call itself the only democracy in the Middle East, then turn it into a democracy. Simple as that. If it's not going to be called a democracy, then just call it, you know, the Israeli state. And no one else is welcome there to have equal rights. So call it what it is, or call it what it should be. The apartheid state of Israel, with its uh, Israeli-only roads, or this road for Arabs, 
uh, the exclusions of various peoples from all kinds of different positions in the country. It, it, so then the argument against it from the from the Zionist force is, mm-hmm. well, in so many years from now, then the Arabs will be a majority. Well, okay, so how about right now? South Africa, the blacks are a majority, but they're not killing each other anymore. For whatever it is, it is, Mm -hmm. but they're not at each other's throats, Mm -hmm. and they're a majority. And and, and there's there's more freedom now. They don't have this going on anymore, this this internal hatred of of each other. So to me, this was a this was an eye opener. Interesting film, yeah, yeah, good. There's some good films out there. Yeah, to me, that you know, I haven't heard this before. No, you know, from you know, maybe a lot of people have, but I haven't. Well, and, and honestly, to make it make it a, a yeah. one state solution. Yeah, sure. Well, they're increasing their West Bank building, their East Jerusalem building. They they. Those controllers of the Zionist apartheid state of Israel do not want a one-state solution, will not accept it. They're going to build their way into utter hegemony over the Palestinian people, what's left of them. And most of them live in the world's largest outdoor prison right now. They want these people to scatter. They want a diaspora. They want to kick them out. They want to force them out into Jordan, into Lebanon, into northern Egypt, whatever. The idea is to cleanse greater Israel to the extent that there is no significant minority representation of other peoples. That's that's what's going on. It's going on as plain as day. Well, I well, I, well, I oh no, I know that's what's going on. So what I'm saying is that to me that was a good solution, a wonderful uh, the, the solution, one, the one state solution. Well, of and course, it's not, yeah, it's 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 even handed to me. Absolutely, yep, I completely concur. You know, it's interesting the original projected homeland for the Jews, the first choice was not Palestine. They even looked at Galveston, Texas. And, and, and uh, which, which, was it Nigeria? It was one of the countries I think Ghana, in Africa. We are one of those, yeah, one, right, yeah, right, one, right. The Congo, Congo, yeah, yeah. any of that. And they also considered Madagascar at one point. And they've been surveying and control most of Patagonia, southern Patagonia, right now. They have tremendous holdings down there. That's their kind of their go-to place in a hurry. They could relocate to Patagonia. So they, they've got, that. yeah, it's true. I've done stories on this from folks down in Argentina. They've been surveying Argentina for a long time. That's their target. Well, and it's a are, smart place to go, actually, because... Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, if there's nuclear blowouts in the in the Western Hemisphere, yeah, you're far, furthest away from it. No, they there. got planes on standby now to fly yeah. the elite uh, right down there, and it's it's all set and waiting for them. They, they, nobody knows about it because it doesn't make the Zionist media, and most of the media is Zionist-friendly or Zionist-owned and operated, so that's the way it works. Uh, on the economic note, tomorrow's a big day because... Uh, mm-hmm. America's public enemy number one, Osama Ben Bernanke, the man that has destroyed the dollar uh, and, and the nation with his quantitative easing. I wonder how much a year he spends on having that beard professionally trimmed, huh? Yeah. Uh, they're going to announce whether or not they're going to taper off their uh, quantitative easing, which, of course, is uh, the other word is stimulus, but the real word is printing cheap money to bail out their buddies at the banks. Yep. Uh, now here's you know we're coming out with a major um, mid-year report economic trend forecast uh, in the next trends journal, the summer edition, uh, and, and also we're going to be re- revamping it in uh, very great fashion to a, a whole new look and style. Oh, but the it, publication? Re- yeah, yeah, we're really going to um, you know right now it's about um, it's forty pages of of uh, advertising no. free. No ads, uh, folks. Yeah, and so what we're going to do is make it a, a bit more reader friendly. Uh, less people seem to be wanting to go through all that. that so we're going to make it so it's more pleasing, with more photos, more illustrations, more mm-hmm. artwork, and really making it to a magazine like nothing has ever been seen before. But anyway, we're coming out in the meantime with our mid-year report on the economy. So here's here's it in a nutshell. Of course, it'll be much more extensive than this. 
we're seeing a rise in interest rates already. You know, I, as you know, I bought historic buildings here in Colonial Kingston, New York. Mm-hmm. The 1750s was the first one I bought, 1774 and 1763. The first building I bought back last June, I got a commercial loan at 3.5%, you know, locked in for five years. Mm-hmm. That loan now is up to 4% if you were to get that same loan today. Mm-hmm. So mortgage rates are going up. This is solely an interest rate recovery. Historic low interest rates are the only thing that is spurring the economy in the United States, plus all of that quantitative easing, which is buying up, of course, government bonds and auction rate securities, tune of $85 billion a month by the Federal Reserve. Mm-hmm. The world, the banks, the central banks have dumped in over $12 trillion. That's the lowest end number that I saw on and up to 20, 12 to 20 a trillion, no matter, depending on whose numbers you look at, to re-stimulate the economy. So here's what's going on. As we speak, what are there, over 100,000 people took to the streets in Brazil? Uh-huh. How many in Bulgaria yesterday? Oh, it was Bulgaria. I didn't know there was a Bulgaria. Bulgaria never makes the news. People now in Turkey, people in Spain and Greece, people throughout the world are taking to the streets in unprecedented masses. You know my saying, yeah. when people lose everything and have nothing left to lose, they lose it. You get a couple of hundred thousand, a couple of million people taking to the streets, the government can have all the troops they want, they can have all the weapons they want, they're not going to be able to stop it. Period. Paragraph. They could have FEMA camps. They could have they could have anything that they want. You start getting those numbers out to the streets, and they don't leave. You have problems on your hand. I don't care what government you want. No, that day won't come too soon here. And do you know in China, that's their greatest fear of the people? Mm-hmm. I'm sure you know that. Mm-hmm. Because what do they have? 1.2 billion of them? Mm-hmm. And if they start losing control of them, there's no army in the world that can handle that. And then it gets to the point, when do the soldiers stop killing their their neighbors and their families? So that that becomes a breaking point as well. Look at the Civil War here. When do you stop shooting your cousins and your aunts and uncles and all the rest of it? Well, again, but this now imagine this going on in cities. Throughout the world, mm-hmm. I wish so it would is, go on here. I mean, you're this, right. Well, this, well, it's very, it's very important to watch because, as you know from my past trend economic forecasts, mm-hmm. I've said the same thing over and over again: that there won't be any recovery. This is merely a cover-up. When they stop the money printing schemes, stop the low interest rate recovery Ponzi scheme, exactly, the thing collapses. Now. As I've said often, if America and Europe don't buy, the Chinese don't manufacture. If the Chinese and the Indonesians, the Vietnamese and the Bangladeshis don't manufacture, the Canadians, the Australians, the Chileans, the Bolivians, the Brazilians, they don't export their raw materials. Brings us back to, hey, what's going on in Brazil right now? They're rioting in the streets. How come? Because they're tired of all the corruption. They're tired of living in poverty. They're tired of being overtaxed and underserviced. They're tired of their lives being on on the edge all the time. So this is very important to watch. Now it goes back because in trend forecasting, all things are connected. It goes back to how we almost began this conversation. Syria. When all else else fails, they take you to war. You want to get your mind off the economic problems? How about a nice bloody war? A couple of terrorist attacks, false flag are real. We're overdue, historically, for exactly that. Uh, We are literally uh, moments away, potentially, from an open wide open Mideast war and where it could go for there from there anywhere yeah and again true. it goes to to me 
As I said, you don't have to be a trend forecaster or Albert Einstein to figure it out. This is good. Look, they, Jeff, we've heard it forever. Generals are always fighting the last war. <laughs> you think they're going to need all these tanks and these F-35s? No. These are wars of weapons of mass destruction. I've been writing about these for years. You know, boom goes London, boom Paris. You know, that old song. Uh -huh. uh, and, and a dirty bomb here, biological warfare there, a suitcase-sized nuke over here. One after another, it's complete chaos. They closed down 100 square miles of Boston to get a 19-year-old kid. Could you imagine what would happen if yeah. there's a major strike in a major city, yeah. in major countries around the world? The economies go on crash. Right now. Right now. You're right. Totally right. I call this place Camp Usury. That's my name for America now. Well, again, it's up to the human spirit to change the course. Do we have that spirit left here? Well, you know, it's up to each uh, in the individual. I have it, only speaking for myself. No, I'm with you. Know, you. I, I want to leave, this, I wanna leave mm -hmm. this earth on a high note, that I was true to my word and true to who I am and said I was. And uh, to me, you know, that hell is taking that last breath and knowing that you lied to yourself and you weren't the person who you said you were or could have been. So uh, all I'm saying is everybody has it within themselves to reach the greatest heights, and this is the time for that. And in doing so, to consider getting in shape physically, emotionally, and spiritually. And we can restore America. This country was never perfect. Nothing is. No one is. And, and you know, we, we had committed a lot of atrocities and did a lot of things that we, we shouldn't be proud of, that we were not proud of, including my own life. I mean, I'm not the same guy I was all my life, you know. And But you grow. But you take the best of the past and you, and you retrofit it for the future. Mm -hmm. And that's what a renaissance is. So I want to see a restoration of America. I want to see greatness again. I want to see quality. I want to see laws put back into place, like the Glass-Steagall Act. The Robinson Patman Act, the Sherman Antitrust Act, the the, uh, the Clayton Antitrust Act, so that people can become entrepreneurs again. The monopolies that they have over us in retail and pharmaceuticals. There used to be a thing, a quaint little thing, when I was a kid. They're drugstores, and the local pharmacist was my neighbor, or or or, or the hardware store, where the guy was down the block, or the woman that owned the the, the dress shop. They're all gone now. They're all Packing bags at Home Goods, Home Depot, Lowe's, and and uh, Staples. So we can restore America by bringing it back to the fundamentals, and one of them is no foreign entanglements, no more to war. Let's abide by what the founding fathers. And I know people are going to write to me. Yeah, the founding fathers had slaves. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to hear it. You know, they they had a lot of great things as well. No, leave me out of it too. Thanks. I'm sick of that. Yep. All right, as you see it right now, in a nutshell, is Russia going to stand up and say, Yep, no. yep, yep, I do. Yep, uh, and I, as I said, nobody's going to push Russia around. I'm with you. I'm with you. And the remember Trends the Trends Journal, Journal yep, yep. and TrendsJournal.com, and we make it available to everyone. There's a discount request page because we know people are having a difficult time, and you'll surely read history before it happens. Always. TrendsResearch.com as well. Thank you, Gerald. Talk to you hey, next thank month. thank you, Jeff. You bet. Thanks. Gerald Salente, the Trends Journal. Okay, that's hour one, and we'll be right back. 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 And we'll be right back.